first is Barbara Williams. Barbara's here. Welcome again, Barbara. Three minutes. And let me turn that microphone. Yes, it's on for you. There you, go. you indicated you wanted five districts without an elected mayor. Well, shame on you. It should be what the citizens want, not what you want. The council made an egregious mistake by not implementing the safe harbor provision to limit your legal liability to $30,000. I know two members were not part of that decision, but three of you were. You took away our ability to fight the lawsuit. It was a frivolous lawsuit with no proof that a protected class was neglected. No, most of us don't want to go to districting, and no, most of us don't think it's a good thing. So you have no right to force districts into your mold, but are obligated to do it the way we want. Five districts would be like setting up five subsidies or fiefdoms that would promote competition for resources and decisions that are not in the best interests of the entire city. Dr. Dixon provided a suggestion at the last meeting since he was not aware of the February 27 meeting. Well, a lot of us were not aware as indicated by only two public comments. We don't read the Star or Acorn anymore due to biases and inaccurate information and many people don't drive by the city hall or survey the website to address issues. The way to get out information in the city is through the trash bills. Many of us in the city have either direct TV or dish and do not have the community access channel. So Mr. Pirrick, when you give the excuse that you've gotten the information out, you need to use methods that will ensure the majority of the population do get the info. I have been speaking with friends and neighbors and the majority of the people are in agreement with Dr. Dixon and want four districts and an at-large elected mayor. Both Sean and Susan did surveys that came up with the same results. So are you too going to listen to what the people have said and vote as your surveys suggest? This will ensure that each citizen has two representatives on the council with one representing everyone in the city. To take it from the citizen's ability to vote for all five to just one means less accountability. And it only takes a small number of votes to elect a council member. When people submit Matt, maps, they can provide rationale for boundaries and special interest areas. You should not be deciding that for us. You screwed up on this already, and for once, listen to what the people want. Since the council forces into districting, do as we desire. Choose four districts with an at-large elected mayor. We have the ability to choose a mayor and determine whether they'd be ethical for that job. If being mayor is important to you, then run for mayor. To ensure that elections with typically higher voter turnout do not overshadow typically lower turnout elections, the mayor term should be two years, so the mayor is elected at each four-year election cycle. Again, give the public the opportunity to decide what they want and quit forcing your own positions on us. The people in this city are very smart. Four districts and an at-large elected mayor is Los Personas' decision. Thank you for your comments. Next is uh, Matt Lorimer. Matt right here. Again, Matt, three minutes if you would. I appreciate it and welcome. Uh, thank you. I'm for four districts and elected mayor. Let me tell you why. I lived here for 20 years. I ran for city council three times. I sit in the audience when there was one person, three people, or, or when something went really bad and they didn't want a development, it was full of people. We, we also, I also helped with term limits. I was one of 20 people. So let's look at the history of Camarillo. We're about to make changes in the city, so let's look what has gone wrong. Our last city attorney cost us money. We had the Fiesta scandal. We had the desalt plant, 15 years. We empty firehouse for 20 years. A lot of bad decisions. When we had a rotating mayor, when I sit down here, some of the people that were mayor were low energy, it's my time of year, we're rotating it out again. But let's look at what got done. Nothing got done. The citizens of Camarillo made a determination last year. And over a period of time, they basically threw out three city councilmen. You know why? Because they were no longer happy with not getting things done in the city. Scandals, excuses. You know, poor government, people got tired of it finally because they want a better system. Today, we're talking about why we should elect a mayor. You know why? If you do a rotating, does Walmart rotate their CEO? Do companies just say, hey, you want to be a CEO off the floor? No. They want somebody with drive and passion. When you want to be a mayor, you want, we want to see you fight it out for it. We want to see vision. We want to see accomplishments. We want to see projects done, not dragged out for 15 years. That is why you need to elect a mayor, somebody that has passion and drive, who sets the tone here. 
Because that's not what's gone on in the city for many years. I've been here. I've seen what goes on. The rotating mayor doesn't work. If it worked, the city wouldn't have a desalt plant. We, for 15 years, we wouldn't be talking about it. We wouldn't be talking about empty buildings. We wouldn't be talking about failures at the city hall. And you know why? Rotating a mayor doesn't work. If it worked, we wouldn't have got rid of three councilmen. Think about it. What we need here is somebody who has drive and passion, who has goals, and that way we can hold them accountable. If you don't get those things done, you're gone. We're not going to elect you mayor because you need a leader. Any organization, do you know, any business, do you know they just, hey, you want to be uh, in charge, want to be president and CEO? It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. They pick the best. And who picks the best? The citizens. Did you read a mayor, if you look this up, the definition, it's an elected head of a city or municipality. Elected. That's what you need. Just like you elect a president and you get rid of them every four years if you don't like them. We need a leadership. You know why? We want to drive and get things done in the city because it's not working under, let's rotate the mayor this week. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. By the way, this is an advertised public hearing. I'm going to open it and I'm going to make sure that all of these comments that have been made by the first two speakers are part of the public record. With that, um, a Colleen Steed, I believe. It's Colleen, yes. Welcome. Uh, again, if you would keep it to three minutes, I'd appreciate it. Sure. Um, I just want to thank, um, as a Camarillo resident for over 30 years, I appreciate all of what our city staff and our city council have done for our city. We are now faced with the change as a result of what some would consider a poorly written legislation. The California Borders Right Act has brought Camarillo to the requirement of district-based elections. This will reduce the number of city council members that a resident will vote on. I look at the maps and think our community spans a geographic landscape with our various populations. I know in our litigious nature, this has brought new requirements, but we need to replace like with like. Think, if you will, not setting the districts by number of seated city council members, rather think how we can maximize our city voice. In the last election, we were able to vote for three. With a district-based five zones, I will vote for one, and sometimes none. I respectfully request that you go to a four city council member with an out-large voting mayor elected every two years. This will give voters at least one vote each election. You are letting Camarillo residents control what is going on and will let us resolve an issue that has been forced on our community. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Next is Larry Davis. Larry here tonight. Again, Larry, uh, three minutes and welcome. Thank you, Mayor and Council members and staff. Uh, I recognize that we have a council city manager form of government, and I think that system should be maintained with five elected council members and the mayor selected from those five. My concern is if you have a strong mayor position, that person will then become the administrator and force unduly influence on the city staff. It's worked well for since 1964 with the council city manager form, and I think it can work that way in the future. I worked for the city for 30 years. I saw how the council worked in the rotating the manager and mayor position, and I think it worked well. It's time to retain that form of government and not really switch to a strong mayor influence on the city manager and the staff. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Next is uh, uh, Bev uh, Dransfeld. Bev, uh, yes, she is. Okay. Again, Bev, three minutes if you would, and welcome. Good evening. Um, I'm not here to repeat anything I said before. You all know the points that I've brought up and my position. Um, many California cities are having to compete 
or having to complete some form of districting. This can work to Camarillo's advantage by having discussions with other neighboring cities who have already gone through the process. Simi Valley recently completed their districting maps. I spoke with one of their council members to ask for any advice that she may have or some complications Simi Valley ran into. I mentioned how tonight the decision was going to be made about how many districts and if uh, Camarillo would have an elected at-large mayor. The council member explained their process. The council left it up to the residents to decide by creating their own maps with a variety number of districts. This gave them the opportunity to see the benefits or downsides in each scenario. As residents become more hands-on and there are more workshops presented, it gives Camarillo an opportunity to learn more uh, as to what's at stake. I ask that the council please consider this as the public is still coming to terms with districting. Before decisions are made on the number of districts or if there should be an elected mayor, it is important to understand the duties of the mayor currently. What would change, if anything, with five districts or if there would be an increase in responsibilities with an at-large elected mayor? I don't believe it is fair to make a decision tonight without clarity on, that, on the mayorship. One of the concerns expressed at previous meetings is that an elected mayor may be given more power. Are there or will there be actual stipulations in place that will make this concern true? For example, can the mayor override a popular decision or selection for an appointed position? Moving forward with further public hearings and workshops, I'm not sure of the difference, but it appeared as though the courthouse hearing was successful with its publicity. Also, I think it would be an amazing opportunity to go to the actual neighborhoods and communities to receive public comments and create awareness. For example, holding town halls in places like Leisure Village, Camarillo Springs, Village at the Park, over at the YMCA Center, Mission Oaks, etc. During the 2018 election, I recall members of the Leisure Village community wanting town halls that weren't just centered around election time. This is the perfect opportunity to go to the people instead of them coming to City Hall. Las personas son la ciudad. We can make this true by thoroughly educating Camarillo and have them hands-on in the decision-making process by seeing what the city would actually look like with whichever number of districts. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your comments. And just part of the record, Bev, I did receive your email, and it's part of the record. Thank you. All right, next is uh, Neil Dixon. Again, Neil, uh, three minutes, if you would, and uh, welcome. Well, uh, thank, thank you very much for allowing me to speak tonight. I appreciate the, appreciate the time that several of you have given to speak to me personally about this. I respect every one of you, and I know you're here to do the best you can for the city. And there's a sharp difference of opinion on what is best for the city. I think that all of you do know what my position is, and I favored four districts and an elected mayor. In January, when, when you voted to proceed with districting as, as you were forced to essentially by, by the lawsuit, many of you, most of you, almost all of you lamented the fact that we were losing the at-large system. We do have a way to maintain some portion of the at-large system, and that is to elect a mayor at large. And, and then the remaining four council members would be elected in their district, giving us the advantage of both districting and the at-large system in combination. The uh, former, uh, I believe, he, the, the uh, assistant uh, city manager just, just spoke to you about in opposition to the, the mayor, but he did use a, a legal term that I just re re learned recently. He used the term strong mayor. There is another legal term that you guys can use to define the powers of the mayor. The, that, that decision, the powers of the mayor, is entirely within your, your power right now. The, um, but I wouldn't, the difficult decision you guys have to make, I think that there is a, key, a, a really key issue here. And the, the issue is, is really there's what it's about and what it's not about. It's not about future candidates running for office. It's not about what some attorney in Malibu wants or the money that he wants to make. It's not about whether you all work together well together or not. It's not about whether you would all like to rotate into the position of mayor or not. In fact, it's really not about you at all. It's about all of us, all of, you, all of us who are not sitting up there, all of us who vote, 
all of us who care about this, this city, and all of us who want to be represented. You, you're, you're offered two, two choices here, five districts and a mayor, or four dis, uh, with a, uh, without a mayor, or f uh, four districts with a mayor. Option one gives each voter one vote every other election cycle for one-fifth of the council. I don't think that gives us power. The, al the other alternative gives us each one, one or two votes every election cycle. Which one of those systems gives us the most engagement in the system? I believe that, for, that having two votes is better than one. That, get, that engages the, the, the voters more into the system. Which one is gonna stimulate voter uh, out, uh, participation in the system? I think if they have a mayor to vote for, they have somebody to vote for, they're gonna come out and vote. Which option gives us each the, the greatest govern the, the participation in our government? I think that's pretty clear. If we are voting, we are participating, and we are part of the government. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your comments. Okay. Nonverbals, okay. Next is uh, Bill Little. Is Bill here tonight? Ken, Bill, if you could keep it uh, three minutes and uh, welcome. Thank you uh, for having this public hearing. My comments tonight is a result of 34 years as city manager in five cities. My recommendations are based upon my experience and includes 21 years of service in three cities that had directly elected mayors. I think it's very important that municipal organizations avoid unnecessary points of friction, which could lead to conflict within the organization. A directly elected mayor with four council members elected from districts is likely to create several points of friction. The most obvious one is it elevates one council position over the other four. An elected mayor's position has no more authority than any other council position, yet if you ask most citizens, they would be under the incorrect impression that the mayor runs the city. A person holding that title can serve as an advocate for citizens or causes, but they still only have one vote. Some mayors I work with cannot accept that because they have the title mayor and therefore believe that more of the, is expected of them. And therefore, they attempt to form alliances within the council or attempt to force staff to agree to actions not approved by the council. Another issue that can result from friction between the mayor and city manager, in an effort to fulfill citizen expectations, elected mayors may try to exert themselves into the administration of the city and try to influence the decisions of city staff members. The, that is the responsibility of the city manager and ultimately to the, as a city council. Another potential conflict between the mayor and council members is the term of the mayor. If the directly elected mayor is given a four-year term, two council members will always be in a position to have to give up their seat in order to run against the mayor. If given a two-year term so that all council members will have equal opportunity to challenge the mayor, the mayor could be put in a position of having to conduct a very expensive campaign every two years. In contrast, Camarillo current city organization has, a few, has very few contact, conflict points. Five, we have five equal council positions with a rotating mayor, elected by the council for a one-year term, supported by a appointed city manager and staff. This has been the model of Camarillo city government since incorporation. It has served the city well over 50 years. It can easily be modified to add, add counts, district elections. I urge you to continue this form of government. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you for your comments. Any questions? Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Uh, next, I have two yellow cards, nonverbal, and they'll be passed among the council here. First, I believe it's Doug McDonald, and he said, I prefer five district with a uh, rotating mayor, and the map should not take into consideration the current location of council members. Uh, second, uh, uh, Libby Higgins has said, I am pro five districts. So I have two yellow cards. I'm going to pass them to the council members and they will read them uh, at this particular time. 
I do not have any more blue cards. Would anybody like to come up and say anything on this issue? Uh, this is an advertised public hearing, and after I close the hearing, we will not be reopening the public comment time. So if anybody would like to comment, this is really the time to do it. Yes, sir, if you would come up forward. Appreciate it. Let me pass this down. There you go. If you could hand that blue card in to Miss Madeline, I'd appreciate it. And let me announce your name, if you wouldn't mind, sir. Oh, okay. Very well. And you know the three minutes, and I appreciate it. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My name is Timothy Sprinkles, Village at the Park. Um, I've talked to some of the council members about this, try to get educated about it, let them know my views. I'm impressed with Sean and uh, Ms. Uh, Mrs. Sansangelo's effort to get a survey done, you know, or, or a poll done to, to read what the public wants. So I appreciate that, and I appreciate all of you. Appreciate all of you. Um, for your efforts here tonight and throughout this process. Um, I want to uh, suggest to the council that four districts <clears throat> make sense to most of the people I've talked to with an elected at-large mayor. And the reason for that is I think the city uh, voters right now would like to see a mayor or a mayoral race between people who have vision for where the city should go, and they should have an equal vote with the other council members, so I'm not opposed to that. Also, um, I think that the um, uh, staff running the city, which Mr. Little referred to, is a good thing in some ways, but it also has a lot of uh, the changes and things going on in this city being uh, really run by people who are not beholden to the voters. And I think if, the, if you had a mayor with a vision who could lead this city, um, you'd have, a, in, a, in an election race, you'd have maybe two, three, four people running, and they could lay out their policies, lay out their platform, and the voters would then choose which way they wanted this city to go. So that's just my feeling about it. I respect all of you who feel that five districts and, and pop the, uh, vote, the residents here who want five districts, I understand that. But when you have a rotating mayor, I believe that each mayor who takes his seat has his own policies, he has, has his own platforms and direction for the city. And then the next year, you get a different mayor who may say, you know what, I don't believe in all that or I don't want to go that way, and the end result is basically nothing happens or you don't make progress. So I would like to see a new vision in the city, and I'd like to see the voters elect a mayor who has, that, who has a vision that they prefer. So thank you very much. Thank you for your comment.